Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschick, behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're going to be talking about negative painting and uh, we'll explain that uh, shortly. Um, and our subject today is the lady slipper. Now we were fortunate enough to have lady slippers growing in the area. Just multitudes of them, I've never seen so many. We've done uh, shorts of them, and today we're going to actually do some negative painting with them. And it's perfect because lady slippers have this beautiful little white slipper. Now, um, I did a little field study first, and uh, just uh, didn't do much with the background. I just wanted to show off the lady slipper. That's in pastel. Um, this one I did last night, and uh, I had the paint breaking up a little bit, but it's kind of interesting. And this is, you know, the, the typical um, painterly print using uh, the speedball block printing inks. I have a variety of them here, and I'll show you the colors shortly. So here's some imagery uh, out in the field. Uh, they were mostly growing in ditches and in shadier areas. So some nice foliage. I'm not sure we'll try for the negative spaces around some of these leaves. Probably won't have time, but uh, this is something that you can do at home. So starting, so we're gonna be doing some drawing here. Just moving my palette over. And I have uh, some black, I have some, uh, some violet, and that's all they call it, just a number in violet. Some um, close to phthalo blue. Uh, two types of yellow. One is more of a cad yellow, and they call it dark yellow. And uh, some brown and some red. They, they don't really give you any um, specific names. I have white. And let's start with a black. Okay, so I've prepared the plate with a little bit of this um, extender. And I, as I said, I had trouble, you know, having the paint bl uh, bleed on the plate a little bit and separate, which isn't good. Uh, not something you really want. So what I've done is I've put this on uh, and then just blotted it off. And hopefully that will take care of our... Uh, paint breaking up problem. Now then, back to our brush. So this is a little rigger. Now, this paint is tricky, so you add a little bit of water, but not too much, otherwise you're going to have this beading problem. So we're just going to sort of um, figure out, it, you know, when you print, it always comes out uh, facing the opposite way. So I could draw it like this, and then it goes the other way, but We'll see. I'll, I kind of wanted um, maybe something like bookends, so we'll draw it this way. But it will print in, in the reverse. It'll sort of flip. Okay, so just... Um, no, you want to have a good composition, so obviously you don't want it dead center. And uh, we're just going to outline maybe the how big the lady slipper is going to be and where are the ends of the, maybe down in here. And this one will probably go up in here somewhere. And where is our stem going? Maybe about here. And this this uh, piece is like that. And then our stem down in here, okay. So leaves here. No, it's not beating, so I think we're gonna be doing good. And and it'll just um, crop off the side here. And there's this top of the lady slippers, maybe up here. And our these wings, let's call them wings, <laughs> are on the side. 
starting at the top and then overlapping the slipper a bit and then giving this nice shape crossing over and it's going to drape right over top of this here again crossing over and then just what should we call that sort of meandering down okay and we'll adjust the shapes as we go now on this side let's put it up here and again it's cutting over a little bit and a nice wave now we want that to end about there okay that's good that might be a bit long now you can adjust it at this point just by taking it off all right let's do our outline our lady slipper starting at the top here now it's a bit rounder than that than this particular so let's give it that really nice round shape and the hole here that's quite a feature so we're going to exaggerate a little bit And then the inner workings of the orchid. I think those are the sepals. They have little dots on them. We'll put them in later. These have that wonderful marking and it also gives this depth, this dimensionality. There you go. Okay, our final little wing here and it sort of comes sideways and then sort of winds and then carries on its merry way right off the page okay And I'll probably adjust that a little bit later. Okay. So that gives us our basic shapes. And we have one more leaf to do here. And uh, let's see. It probably starts below here. The leaves are quite narrow, typical orchid leaves. And they have lines going down now. I don't know if that's going to disappear or we enhance it again later. And the same with this one. Attaches like this. Okay, this sort of gives us a, a good base. Just lift that one line off because this overlaps that. Now we don't need to correct a lot of things. Um, this might be a bit narrower, maybe. because we're going to be painting it negatively for the most part. Okay, so now we're at the negative painting. Now, let's have a look at where the negative spaces are. There's these shapes in here, so this piece in here is a negative shape. We have this 
area in here, that's a negative shape. All in here, this is a negative shape. So negative shapes are those areas that you can't name. Now, in an abstract, you're going to have uh, some shapes. You can't maybe name them. So the negative spaces in that case would be around the shapes. And we're just going to remove that because uh, that was a, a marker. So now we're going to mix some color. Now, um, there aren't a lot of really dark colors uh, and mixing black from what I have here with violet. Uh, I don't have a, a green as such. I can mix um, just the phthalo blue that we have, you know, with a bit of yellow and that makes uh, quite a nice green. But you can see that it's fairly light. We can darken it somewhat with our violet. A little bit more, maybe a tiny bit more of the yellow, but that just makes it lighter again. You see what I mean? Now, the thing with adding black to a um, a mixture is that it may make it look muddy. So you can add a little bit of this brown tone. I'm going to add a fair amount of blue to it. Okay, that's not bad. Now you see here how light the color, uh, you had it sort of like this, and this is how it prints. So you have to be mindful. If you add black, it kind of takes the, the color down, um, the saturation down, and then uh, it can look kind of um, muddy. We can try a tiny bit, just to take it down a touch. We're just gonna add more of the yellow and more of the blue. So it looks fairly good and uh, we're going to put this darkest area around the shape of our little wings here. Oh, and it's not beating. Okay, so we sort of solved that problem. And you can adjust with your negative shape. Because really this wing starts in the center, so... And you can make it as painterly as you want. Try not to have too much of a thick edge around your shapes and vary your brush strokes. Now you have to start thinking now, um, is it going to be the same color all in the background? Well, that would be kind of boring, wouldn't it? So we're going to be lightening things up. So we'll take it here. This shape and move your brush. Do whatever it takes to sculpt around our shapes here. And you can add maybe a little bit more yellow. Brighten it up as you go further down. A little more blue. Here, when I cut this, make that into that nice twisted shape. So think in terms of shapes the whole time, rather than naming the objects. And sculpting, in a way, is a good term. All around your edges here. And we'll just taper that off. So you can correct your drawing as you go. This was just a diagram, after all.
Again, vary your brush strokes and your colors. Make it interesting. Here we go. Um, now we're going to add, this will be the light side. We're going to add a fair amount of yellow into this mixture. And that's what's fun about uh, this kind of painting is you're doing all your shapes and then varying your brush strokes, playing with color. Just make it the way you want it. And there's no saying you can't really make it bluer as well. Just make some nice transitions. Now, I don't know about fan brushes and things of this nature for this kind of painting. Um, I think stick with this um, way of working. There's no saying you couldn't have, say, a violet background that would work well, or even a red background. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. Just to keep it fairly dark close to your shape. Once you've added all the paint for your negative shapes, then you can go into the basic shapes. And sometimes they have negative shapes in themselves, like this area in here. So I'm just gonna add some more tones back here so it doesn't look like an abrupt transition between here and here. sure you have these edges really well defined. Edges are fun. And some of them can be lost. We don't have to have them all sharp. Like here, this one down here could probably get lost. <laughs> we'll just tell it get lost there. <laughs> all right. So that's it for our negative shapes for the main part. Okay, just wiping my brush off. We don't have to get too crazy with that. No, in this case we're going to add some violet into here. So we need a shadow tone. Because we're using a lot of uh, yellow our shadow tones are going to have some violet in them. So around here, this negative shape here is going to have some of this lovely violet down there. And 
Now it's a bit wet, it's paint is breaking up there, you see. That's what we don't want. So, remix. And maybe I didn't get quite enough of that medium on there, but it's okay. There we go. Okay, we have another shadow area down in here. And the, there's some marks here that could be painted in. So it's just a right, you'll have to experiment uh, with just the right consistency of the paint. I can only speak for uh, speedball printing inks. Um, you could try this in acrylic and add um, a tartar medium or the open acrylics, which will give you a little bit more time to work with down here too with that little bulby part ends. And down in here, because it's shadowed because it's close to the stem. And probably down in here as it's going off the page. So now we're, we're going to actually leave the slipper white, which was the whole point of this exercise. And we'll probably change brushes. And we're going to mix that brown. Now we have to be careful about this. We'll add some of the yellow into it. It's more of an opaque color, so it has, yes, you can see the consistency. Not quite so fluid. So we'll give it a shot. Starting up here. And then this side. It's doing really well. I'm just leaving the you know, that base drawing in, it's fine. It just gives it a little bit more contrast. Yeah, we can just knock this in. And that would be shadowed anyway, so this is a bit darker. More paint. I just really like the sort of sinewy look to these wings that the orchid has. They have such character and they, you know, droop all over the place. Sometimes they go in front, sometimes they stay upright for a while. It's really quite odd. Right. Now we can paint in those orange. Sepals, I guess we'll call them sepals. You can correct me if you like. <laughs> huh. But they should be quite brilliant, so. A little bit more red. And 
that's better. In that other painting, they just weren't bright enough. They really are quite spectacular. And a nice touch of color. If you do a lot of grade colors, uh, that really works if you have, you know, some splashes of really saturated colors. And then that will really make it sing. So we have only the leaves left to do. And uh, not too much. We could have done more negative painting in the background, but as I said, you know, we never have enough time for all of that kind of thing. But you at home can pick out leaves, shapes, you know, draw them in and then paint around them and then paint the leaves. That's the way, the method of it. Okay, so here's, we're going to mix a really brilliant yellow green to make the leaves distinctive and the stem here. This is, um, the texture of this is an awful lot like oil painting. It has sort of that um, consistency. That's when it's right. Okay, here's this leaf. And one brush stroke will do it. You know, don't go back and forth, back and forth to get the paint on. One brush stroke. That keeps it fresh and interesting. Okay, here we have that shadow tone. We haven't really worried about a light source, but um, we could certainly consider it. But for the most part, it's a graphic image. So we have our leaves, we have our petals. I think it's pretty well under control. So now all you have to do is let it dry really well. And then uh, we'll show how to wet the paper and to take the print. And uh, it's uh, all those brush strokes show up. Uh, it's really a fascinating uh, way of creating an image. So we'll be back in a flash. <laughs> okay, now we're at the wetting the paper stage. So I've just got a little sprayer. Um, you know, it's a good idea to have um, good quality water in here, not tap water. Uh, we have uh, really good filtered water for the house. And I'm probably going to spray the back too. This is watercolor paper. It's uh, What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look it up. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Um, I think it's Fabriano, but it's just a mold made paper in this case. And I've used the smooth side. So we're going to put it on uh, a little towel, just flop over and You don't want it too wet or the paint will run and be blurry, So, but you don't want it to dry where it won't pick up the paint. So it's a fine line. You don't want any shiny spots. Here's a shiny spot, so get that off. Uh, and so it should be good. 
it should feel just a little bit um, cool to your touch, the back of your hand. I think that's good. All right. Now we're going to flop the print onto here. Just sort of lining up as you can. Flop it back. Because your paper is wet, you want something to protect it, like a paper towel or another big sheet of paper. So paper towel will do. And now you brayer, or I call it brayering. The running sounds kind of silly. <laughs> and you can take a peek at it to see if it's picking it up, or you may have to leave it for a bit. But the other one printed right away, so we'll see what transpires in a second. So we'll take a peek. Ooh. And ta da. <laughs> so picked up pretty good. Um, but look at the brightness of, of the uh, lady slipper. That's exactly the way I wanted it. And then all the painterly effects. See this one, our lady slipper wasn't quite bright enough. Oops, we got some water on here. We have to be careful, this is water-based paint. And our orange is nice and bright. So, and we still have that strange sort of markings, which is just fine. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is looking after us again <laughs> and you get that special effect and the darkness here because it was in shadow so it's good and so we, now we have um, sort of um, bookends and I might do this again uh, in this format so then definitely they would be looking at each other so so very good and we did get all the negative edges, but um, it just adds interest. Uh, I might just give a little bit more tone to the um, lady slipper itself, just to give it a little bit more dimension. It's, it's a little flat, but just probably with pen, you know, some pen pastels or, or uh, pastel pencils. So, you know, you can touch up what you want or leave it alone. So. So there you have it. We have our negative painting and we have a lovely lady slipper. So as usual, you know, be kind to yourself and your families and be kind to one another. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.